Good day, this is Dr. Carl Thornfeld. I'm a dermatologist who's been practicing here for 36 and a half years, and this is my dermatology trained nurse practitioner, um, Brittany Irons. Today I want to share with you uh, current information uh, that will reduce your risk of developing and getting infected with the deadly coronavirus, reduce your risk of, of spreading it throughout your household, reduce the severity uh, of if you get infected, uh, and also, and most importantly, reducing the risk of spreading throughout our community. You've been hearing uh, in the last week how, they've rec how the government and others have ex recommended using uh, masks. The purpose of the mask is to prevent you from spreading um, if you cough, because the air droplets can go as far as six feet. Um, however, the mask also protects against you getting uh, a bacterial infection or a viral infection caused by a larger virus. What do I mean by that? 50% of the people who've been killed in the pandemics in the last 100 years died from the secondary bacterial infection. That will be stopped by the mask. Many of the people who developed the virus infection had a mild virus infection first. And many of the larger viruses, uh, many of the common viruses are of larger size um, than the uh, coronavirus. So the mask is really important, as is social distancing. Remember that the virus will live for 24 hours on cardboard, 48 hours on steel or metal surfaces, uh, and 72 hours on plastic service surfaces. It's important to disinfect high-use devices with either hand sanitizer. To be effective, a hand sanitizer must have more than 60% alcohol, or it should be one that contains bleach. If you are, cannot find any commercially available in the store, you can make your own at a quarter cup of bleach to a gallon of water. It's also important to be washing your hands uh, for at least 20 seconds with soap. Why? This virus has an envelope that protects it. When that, is, when that envelope is broken, that makes it more susceptible to temperature changes uh, and also to ultraviolet light as well as to disinfectants. It's also important to, uh, have, to get eight hours of sleep a night because that is important for balancing your immune system and also rejuvenating protective cells. If you don't get good sleep, your body can't produce the cells to replace those that were injured um, by an infection um, or injured by fighting off an infection. There are also certain dietary aspects that will really be helpful. Many of the vitamins that we know, it's, and I believe that a multivitamin is the foundation, but in addition to that, you should be ingesting vitamin D, 4,000 to 5,000 IUs a day if you have not been taking any vitamin D supplementation. You should take that amount for a month and then reduce to half of that, so 2,000 to 2,500 IUs a day um, for at least the next uh, three months. Um, children, uh, should, that dose should be reduced by 75%. Vitamin C, 1,000 milligrams twice a day has been shown to help your body fight off uh, this virus. For children, it should be 250 milligrams twice a day. And then probiotic. A probiotic is a layer of bacteria that lays on the surface of the skin, lines the respiratory tract, and um, your stomach and GI tract. It prevents the coronavirus from binding to the human cells. And that's one reason it's so deadly is because it has many receptors to bind to the human cells. So you need to be ingesting a probiotic of at least 10 billion colonies a day. But against this virus, it should contain bifidobacterium uh, and lactobacillus with at least three other um, bacteria uh, in the combination. This, like the vitamin D, should be taken with meals. If you have an underlying autoimmune disease or any type of chronic disease or allergies, you should take 10 billion twice a day. Your body needs that additional. Now, a child should consume 2.5 billion colonies a day, which is the amount in a cup of organic yogurt. Lastly, zinc is important. Zinc it helps modulate the immune system and rebalance it, and also helps uh, control inflammation. But it's also been shown that if you consume zinc 
very early on in an infection, you can stop the uh, progression uh, of the virus infection. So what are good sources of zinc? Zinc picolinate and zinc citrate, 30 milligrams uh, daily are a good foundation. Uh, secondly, uh, is a product called Zycam, which contains zinc. Now, there are Zycams that also contain antiviral agents combined with it. One that I particularly like is the Zycam with elderberry. Elderberry has been shown to be the most effective of the herbs uh, in blocking um, this, this virus, uh, and it comes in gummy form. Now, with an, another name for elderberry is Sambucol, S-A-M-B-U-C-O-L, and Sambucol syrup is a very good source of, of the um, elderberry. Then there's also a Zycam with echinacea. That also is antiviral, and it comes in a citrus-flavored lozenge that you dissolve in your throat. You don't swallow it, you let it work. Why? This virus starts in the respiratory tract, and it's been shown that if you start getting any of the symptoms, so for example, your nose starts getting stuffy, and you have milky, green uh, or uh, yellow um, discharge, if you start getting a scratchy throat, if you start noticing a loss of taste or a loss of smell, if you start um, getting shortness of breath during the day, or if you start feeling like you're developing the stomach flu, immediately increase the zinc to three times a day for six days. That's been shown to reduce the progression of the infection in nearly 80% um, of the patients. Now, there are two other antivirals um, that one is a prescription outside of the United States. Um, I actually invented that in the 80s. Um, and the other is a mushroom extract called Stamet 7. The dose of the Stamet 7 is one capsule twice a day. Uh, and that has been shown to be very effective uh, in killing a variety of viruses, including the envelope virus. The artemisinin, A-R-T-M-I-S-I-N-I-N, uh, it comes in 100 or 200 milligram capsules, and you should take uh, one twice a day, de uh, depending on your body size. If you're over 180 pounds, you should be at 200 milligrams twice a day. The best brands for artemisinin are Doctors Best, Allergy Research Group, or Nutricology. As I mentioned, outside of the United States, uh, it is prescription. Then the other th practice that you should also continue doing um, is do not touch your face. Wear gloves when you are picking up things like uh, cardboard and plastics and metals uh, and other surfaces, but then don't touch your face with the glove hand. That defeats the purpose of it. Now, how do we tell the difference between an allergy and the coronavirus infection? The big distinctions are two. One, the coronavirus will activate a fever above 100.4. So it's important to have a device on hand that you can measure. Feeling with your hand on the forehead is not acceptable. So 100.4 or above indicates viral infection. Allergies, on the other hand, are characterized by itching of the eyes, of the nose, um, a clear watery discharge from the nose, uh, and activation of asthma or wheezing that occurs particularly at night. Coughing at night can also indicate asthma. Corona does not cause asthma. So those are the way you distinguish. Thank you so much for taking your time today. Uh, and CT Derm is available um, uh, Tuesday through Friday for either myself um, or my uh, dermatology trained nurse practitioner, Brittany. Uh, to serve you and help navigate you through this time of crisis. Uh, we do have a website where all this, is infor all this information is written down for you. The website is ctdermpc.com. And I encourage you, sharing this with your other family members um, to help reduce the spread. Remember that together, all of us uh, can stop this deadly menace. Thank you again. Good day.